Bushman Engineering went for precision foam equipment to provide the process control, which it was designed for, to be sustained throughout its serviceable life. Routine care of TDI foam production equipment assures trouble-free operation. A lack of maintenance reduces the functional life of equipment, as well as making process control nearly impossible during the foaming operation. A clean, well-maintained TDI nozzle will reduce production waste. When disassembling nozzles for cleaning after a foaming run, safety gear must be used. Goggles, gloves, an apron, and respiratory protection are all required for safe handling of equipment after TDI injection. Since a new nozzle is used for this instructional video to provide clarity, personal protective equipment was not needed. Injection nozzles are available in a variety of sizes, styles, and throughput capacities. This video covers procedures for the Cushman Engineering XRT-563 nozzle. Tools needed for nozzle disassembly and reassembly include a 3 16 inch hex key wrench, a 5 16 inch hex key wrench, a torque wrench with a 1 and 1 8 inch deep socket, a 1 and a half inch open wrench, 12 inch slip joint pliers, the custom thin pattern 7 8 inch open end wrench supplied with the nozzles, a small flat blade jeweler screwdriver, and a bench vise with a small cloth to pad the jaws. In addition to the tools required for disassembly, a one gallon stainless steel container about two thirds full of hot water mixed with non-sudsing dish or laundry detergent should be available to soak disassembled parts if the nozzle has been used in a foaming run. Gently snug the nozzle body in the vise, adjust her end up using the scrap cloth in the vise to protect the nozzle surfaces. Use the 3 16 inch Allen wrench to loosen the screw in the black bar handle then lift the handle off and set it aside. Never clamp the vise or other tools onto other areas of the nozzle. Severe damage may occur. Loosen the packing nut by holding the bonnet in place with the supplied 7 8 inch thin pattern wrench on its shoulder while loosening the packing nut with a deep well socket. Loosen the 1 inch nut that holds the bonnet to the adjuster body using the 1 and 1 half inch wrench. Then fully loosen this nut and lift the bonnet assembly up and off. Finish removal of the packing nut by hand, being careful not to drop the Belleville washers. Take the adjuster body nut off of the bonnet and shake the other packing components out of the bonnet's stuffing box. Any parts that remain in the bonnet may be pushed out using the 5 16 inch hex key wrench. Parts wet with TDI residue must be placed in hot soapy water as the nozzle is disassembled. The used EPDM O-ring number 021 on the bottom of the bonnet should be removed and discarded as hazardous waste. Pull straight up on the stem to remove it and the upper PTF O-ring. It may help to reattach the black bar handle, being careful to align the set screw with the stem dimple. Both shaft and O-ring are reusable. Place both in the water bath. Using the slip joint pliers, loosen and remove the one and one quarter inch body nut. Slide the adjuster body up and off the nozzle body. Dispose of the used EPDM O-ring number 123 on the bottom, then reach a finger into the upper adjuster body and remove the PTFE O-ring number 117. Place these parts in the soap solution. Fully unscrew the retainer nut with one hand under the plunger and set the nut aside. Through the rest of the disassembly, it's important to keep a finger at the bottom of the plunger to be sure that it doesn't slide out and get damaged. Lift off the anti-rotation nut and die spring, placing both in the soap solution. Slide the plunger shaft down and carefully remove the plunger. Place it and the nozzle body into the soapy water. Now the small PTF O-ring may be removed from the bottom of the retainer nut with a small flat blade jeweler screwdriver. Place nut and O-ring into soak. This completes the valve disassembly. All of the reusable parts should now be soaked in the hot soapy water for an hour before further cleaning. EPDM O-rings should be replaced with new. In cleaning this new valve design, it is critical to assure that the small fluid channels are clean and clear. Use a 1 8 inch drill bit by hand to assure residue is cleaned from the balance passages to assure uniform pressure inside the nozzle and provide smooth, consistent operation. 
After careful cleaning and inspection, thoroughly dried parts are ready for reassembly. Get the two new EPDM O-rings, numbers 021 and 123, required for reassembly. Starting with the parts of the nozzle subassembly, press the small PTFE O-ring fully back into the channel of the retainer nut. Hold the nozzle body in your hand and slide the plunger fully into place. Holding the plunger with the finger, slide on the die spring, then align and slip on the anti-rotation nut on the plunger shaft. Carefully thread the retainer nut assembly onto the plunger shaft until the o-ring is just touching the anti-rotation nut. The nozzle subassembly is now ready to be snugged gently in the padded jaws of the bench vise. Place a new o-ring, number 123, on the adjuster body flange then slip one of the large Teflon O-rings into the threaded end opening of the adjuster body and press it against the shoulder. Align the splines inside the adjuster body with the matching grooves of the anti-rotation nut and gently slide the adjuster body into place. Slip the nut body over the adjuster and finger tighten the nut. Using the slip joint pliers, tighten the body nut to snug it just beyond finger tight. This is a metal to metal joint. Additional tightening could damage the nozzle. The stem female splines can now be aligned with the male splines of the retainer nut and slid into place. The second large Teflon O-ring, number 117, is pressed into the groove between the adjuster body and the stem. Install a new EPDM O-ring on the bottom of the bonnet and slip the bonnet into place over the upper shaft. Slip the adjuster body nut over the bonnet and finger tight and using the one and one quarter inch wrench, tighten the body nut to snug it just beyond finger tight. This is a metal to metal joint. Additional tightening could damage the nozzle. Insert the packing components into the stuffing box. Gland, concave packing, convex packing, second gland, Belleville washer stack with the convex side down. Now carefully thread on the packing nut and finger tighten. Hold the bonnet in place with the supplied 7 8 inch thin pattern wrench and using the 1 and 1 8 inch deep well socket, tighten the packing nut to 20 foot pounds of torque. Place the black bar handle in position on the stem aligning with the dimple and tighten with the 3 16 inch hex key wrench. The nozzle is now ready to be put back into foam production. Cushman Engineering is committed to designing and producing the best precision foam production equipment. We also provide process control expertise to assure that your existing equipment is operating at its most efficient.